Today's talk focuses on the order book for Tesla on the semi truck. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight, and thanks once again for visiting with us. Bonjour, wie geht's, Ras Vice. Today's talk really focuses on what's up with Walmart and Tesla. And then one, number two, why does it matter? And then three, what does the future look like based on one and two? So number one is that Walmart has ordered 15 trucks from Tesla two days after Tesla announced the truck. Now, following on to this, the CEO of Tesla informed us, or CEO of Walmart uh, informed us that it was a no-brainer purchasing the Tesla truck. And the question is, why is that? Well, what's interesting is for companies the size of Walmart, they don't make rapid purchases of, call it, ten, you know, two or three million dollars without somebody getting fired unless the quality of the research was very careful before the decision. So what this then means is that Walmart has been planning this for quite a while. Now, I would argue that it's possible Walmart has been planning this purchase for five years because back in 2013, 2014, they introduced the Wave truck, which I'll show some video of, and their goal has been to figure out how to cut the cost of fuel. And what I'm going to present is an argument why it's possible they can go from spending 250 a gallon or $500 million a year on fuel to possibly zero, and that being able to be kicked back over into the profits of the company. So the first part of this dialogue is the fact that in the order book, Several of the leading purchasers, Walmart, Loblaw, and Meyer, are all grocery stores. And the question was, why is that the case? Answer, 11% of the electricity in the United States is consumed by <clears throat> refrigeration units inside of grocery stores. So what this then means is that there's a focus on making sure, or one, these companies know about electricity, about buying it in large quantities, and how to optimize the buying process. So in the case of Walmart and their hookup with Tesla, I believe they're going to be the model for how this <clears throat> electric truck situation is going to work globally um, once they hook up. It's also my belief that the reason why Walmart is paying, purchasing 15 vehicles now is that they'll soon, <clears throat> based on the numbers generated by the Tesla trucks, be replacing all of their trucks with Tesla electric um, after they get a little trial period going. Um, I think it's awesome because I don't think Tesla is going to be able to produce more than a thousand trucks a month once they get going in two years. Probably going to be more like 500 to start and then eventually a couple of thousand a month coming from their plant. Um, the, there's some fascinating elements to this that I think are interesting for both companies. One element to this is that because Walmart is one of the largest buyers of power in the United States and has been going green in other ways, um, they're very aggressive about cost cutting. And one of the things that's happening is they're buying uh, power generated um, cleanly by solar panels, by wind turbines, etc. And with the economies of scale that go with them now getting into electrics for their trucks, and having to power up those vehicles at their distribution centers, this is going to give cause to Walmart to go ahead and start building their own solar farms, if not their own turbines, to generate electricity to facilitate the, uh, the stores that they have out there. So <clears throat> I think this is amazing because once the hookup between the two of them gets very tight and working in an efficient manner, I believe that other than maintenance costs, um, Walmart will put out the cash to build their own solar farms and no longer have uh, a draw from the local electric power companies uh, if they don't need to, and all of a sudden be able to get their cost basis down to almost nothing for the fuel that goes into their trucks as well as electricity that goes into their stores. So I think this is awesome because the global carbon footprint is going to be reduced and I think it's awesome because, you know, Walmart's going to save money, pay more money to their shoulders, and Tesla's going to sell a lot of trucks with every aspect of what they're trying to accomplish met in the process. Um, I was intrigued because the CEO also, when he said it was a no-brainer to buy Teslas, 
all he's talking about there is a carbon footprint being reduced. I thought it was a funny comment because um, as a CEO, if he came up with a solution that um, just did the, glow, the, the carbon footprint, uh, he'd be kicked out as a CEO. So he knows absolutely the, the value proposition presented by electric trucks, and he can see those numbers, and he's got to show those numbers to his shareholders in order to do what he's doing. And so I think it's great that this whole thing is happening. Now, unfortunately, I think it's going to put some of the grocery stores out of business because most stores operate with a 2% margin. Uh, Walmart has a 3% margin based on paying, I think, people low, but also for other reasons. Um, and therefore, I think, you know, this, there's a great hookup between the two companies. And I think it's going to make a big dent in everything that's happening. I could go on. We'll probably be diving in more into the order book, particularly as the larger orders start to be let out. Uh, I have to admit, I'm impressed by the grocery stores getting on this because they know how to buy electricity and see the potential. Um, I'm impressed by Walmart's effort to reduce trucking costs, uh, first with the wave and then now with these purchases. And so I think it's exciting times to see what Tesla's truck product can do to help change the positive the planet positively. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Please like and subscribe. Tschüss, macht's gut, au revoir, le hitro hot, choda hafez. And an electric motor. Moving inside the cab through the sliding driver's door, you'll see the key difference that allowed for the more dramatic aero design. The driver sits in the center of the console rather than over to the left. The dash is electronic and therefore customizable to the gauges and performance data that a particular driver wants to monitor. And it's all finished off with a full-size, comfortable sleeper. Moving on to the trailer, not only is this the first time a trailer has been made out of carbon fiber, but it's actually the first time one-piece, 53-foot panels of carbon fiber have been manufactured. Looking at the front of the trailer, you can see that the nose is convex, which increases the aerodynamics of the entire package, as well as adding additional cargo space inside the trailer.